Today, I'm going to be giving you 10 amazing Mai Tai variations, Mai Tai riffs that you can try out at home, plus this blue one. Okay, don't disappear. This blue one is just purely a wind up for a couple of people in my membership community that say they absolutely hate blue drinks. But being completely honest for a second, all blue curacao is, is an orange liqueur with blue food colouring. So of course, a simple swap from your orange liqueur to a blue curacao, and you've got a blue Mai Tai. But I'm going to do much better than that. This is a semi semi serious uh, video after all for Mai Tai lovers. So let's put the blue curacao away. Now look, I know a few people are going to get a bit uppity with what's coming up and go, that's not a Mai Tai. And you know what? Technically they're correct. You would probably give these different names. But stay tuned because I think you're in for a little treat because at least six of these, six out of the 10, are not too far removed from that original, let's say not original, let's say uh, Kevin Crossman's ultimate Mai Tai. These are just simple ideas to inject a different life into the Mai Tai. Notice I didn't say new life, and the Mai Tai doesn't need new life, but these are different. So come on then, let's get going, let's dive in. Mai Tai riff number one, I'm gonna be talking about for learning. Now it's important to note through all these 10, uh, there's only a couple when actually talking about the rum. Your base rum, your base blend for all these Mai Tais is completely down to you. I know you've all got your own opinions on that. What I'm talking about is how to inject a different life. Yes, we know rum is part of that, but I'm talking about other ingredients in this video. Now, when I talk about falernum, the best way I can describe it is more of a concept than an actual flavor. And by that, I mean it's basically an orgeat syrup with added sort of citrus and spices. And while there aren't that many different falernums in the UK, the five that I can actually think of all comp taste completely and utterly different. So top of the alcohol, and I'll pop, up, pop it up on screen right there, is World's End Falernum. It's a 35% ABV. I have tried it a couple of times and never actually owned a bottle. From what I remember, it's quite sort of, uh, it is, it's sort of along the lines of a cross between those two. In, in fact, I think it's probably closer to this one, but a very alcoholic version of it. And then coming next down the alcohol lines, uh, slightly uh, lower ABV. I think this is 18, 18% ABV. We've got Bitter Truth, Bitter Truth Golden Falernum. Now for me, I absolutely adore this, but I don't necessarily think of it as a Falernum. It has got, it's got kind of a, like a honey taste to it, to be honest, um, but it's got a little bit of ginger, a little bit of clove, a little bit of cinnamon in there. I don't get too much else. And I don't get too much citrus from it at all. Whereas every other falernum that I do taste, I do get a healthy dollop of citrus. I mean, I could drink that straight. It is delicious. And then we move on to JD Taylor's uh, Velvet Falernum. Pretty much the standard, pretty much the benchmark. If you say falernum to anyone in Rum World, that is the falernum they're going to think of. I mean, it's absolutely delicious. Lovely citrusy bite to it up top. Uh, sort of subtle, ever so subtle ginger, ever so subtle spices. There's a bit of clove, bit of cinnamon, bit of nutmeg in there. Nothing really punches you at the face. It's a very kind of rounded almond, almond and citrusy kind of liqueur. It's an 11% ABV, but nothing in that is really feisty in your face compared to any other falonum I've tasted. And then we come on to the two syrups. Again, I'll pop the ODK one up on screen right now. It's the same brand as what I use for yours, yeah. Um, but then we've got Monin's falonum. I really really like those two and I would use different applications for both of these like the alcohol ones I'm not talking about in this I'm talking about the syrup versions of this because I think the syrup the Monin or the ODK is a direct replacement in sweetness and in texture for your Orgeat syrup so all I've done with this Mai Tai is simply swap out uh, the 15 ml of Orgeat for 15 ml of Falernum. Everything else has stayed the same. So my 60 ml of rum, uh, I've got my seven and a half ml of Demerara, my 30 ml of lime juice, and my 15 ml of orange liqueur. So for me, the syrups are an easier swap out in this because these are alcohol, these are not as thick, not as sweet as what the syrups are. And I just, I just love the spice blends that the two syrups bring to this style of cocktail. For me, and this is probably the wrong way to describe it, but for me, this gives a more tikiya vibe to the Mai Tai, those spices that we kind of inherently know and love from Tiki World, uh, this is what this one does to me. I think the ODK one is a bit too feisty for my liking. The Monin one sits lovely with this sort of cocktail. Now Mai Tai Riff number two is another absolute favorite of mine, macadamia nut syrup. I basically refer to this as a macadamia or jat syrup. And macadamia is obviously a nut. It gives the cocktail a slightly nuttier vibe. So again, for me, it's simply swapping out the 15 ml 
of your Orjatsu. You could even go a step further. You could swap out, so it would be 22 and a half mil. Uh, so that's the Demerara is seven and a half mil. You could actually do a full swap of both sugars in there, or you could just do 15. But for me, it just gives it a lovely, nuttier vibe. And I, I'm not a huge nut fan, but there's something about the macadamia nut that I absolutely adore. And for me, this just works a treat. This would be a great one for playing about with your rum blends, but really easy to get. It's a worldwide morning syrup, or flavour of syrup, I should say. Uh, so yeah, number two, macadamia. Now, don't be put off by the colour of number three, because this is absolutely delicious. And all this is, is a simple swap, seven and a half mil swap of your Demerara or brown sugar in your uh, Mai Tai blend to Monin's Muscovado. And you can make Muscovado syrup at home quite easily. But I absolutely adore this syrup. I've actually got two bottles here. Uh, it ju it's just like a richer, deeper vibe in cocktails. Espresso martinis and coffee, to be fair. Uh, plain just coffee. But in the Mai Tai, Oh my God, that is a completely different level. Now, before I dive into number four, comment below with your Mai Tai riffs. There's quite a few more coming yet, but comment below. I know quite a few of you have got some awesome stuff in your lockers. So let us know. Let the community like, uh, know in the comments below. And also something else before we go any further. I've only got two Mai Tai glasses, so I'm going to be decanting and making, because I, like, I can't lie to them. So the next one, they're all going to be swapped in. I'm going to put them in different glasses. Now for riff number four, we're going to the Smuggler's Cove and Martin K and his Mai Tai Rich Simple Syrup Recipe. And this, I do believe, is a game changer. I absolutely love this, but I need to play about with different rum blends in this. Again, I've just stuck to Kevin Crossman's uh, rum blend, so the OFTD, Smith & Cross, Appleton 12 and the Zymaca. But the Rich Simple Syrup is phenomenal. Now, what this is... Yeah, especially if you make your own syrups at home, this is quite easy to do. You're basically making a batch of brown or Demerara sugar syrup. Uh, you're adding a touch of vanilla extract to it, but the addition of salt. Now, I'll be brutally honest, I use a lot more salt than what Martin Kate uh, has used in his recipe. I'll flash the recipe up on screen. I'll take a photo of it. Now, I, I want to clarify this. I'm not a salt fiend at all. I'm not one of these people that just puts loads and loads of salt on a dinner. In fact, I will probably put uh, maybe one in 25 times I will put salt on my food. I'm not that kind of person. But what I do love is the addition of some proper nice salt in a few cocktails. The pina colada is a great example of this. A touch, a pinch of proper sea salt or rock salt in your pina colada just transforms it. Now, so for me, Martin Kate's recipe is uh, baking, making up essentially a litre. Now, in his recipe, he uses literally a quarter of a teaspoon, I think it is. You'll see it on screen of salt in his litre. Now, for me, I've made up 100 mil, or when I do this, I make up 100 mil, and I use a, a good sort of pinch in there. So you could argue that I'm effectively up in the salt level by 10. Now, bearing in mind, the swap for this is just taking out your normal plain Demerara syrup for your Mai Tai rich simple syrup, which is kind of, as I say, is brown or Demerara with vanilla and salt. It's a seven and a half mil, so even then you're not getting that much salt in the cocktail. But I promise you, just that tiny, tiny little addition of salt, even if you want to use your own set and just a pinch of salt, I promise you, it just transforms the drink and it is completely amazing. And it's something I want to investigate more. I want to be doing different rum blends to see where that salt brings out different flavors. In this blend is amazing. I don't, have no idea if we can do better, but oh my God, this is good. Now, riff number five, I found this completely by accident. I wasn't even looking for it, but oh my God, it works. And this is actually one of my favorite syrups from Monin. Again, a worldwide flavor. Uh, and this is their winter spice. What we've essentially got is cinnamon, chili, ginger, clove, and nutmeg. And oh, it is delicious. It is out of this world. It's just that little kick of chili in there that just completely makes it. Now, I think you could actually go both ways on this, but what I've actually done for this is I've kept, again, the rum blend is the same. Uh, I've kept the orange out, the orange and the lime, but what I've done is a seven and a half mil, and even that seven and a half mil in there is actually just, you know, it's enough just to kind of bring those warming spices and that little hint of chili through. But I also know you could take the orjat syrup down to so instead of 15, you could take that down to 10. And then you could up your, so instead of your demerara, you could up, or brown sugar, you could up that to maybe like 15 mil, give or take, and you can have a play about with your ratios. But oh, 
that just that little sort of it's almost like falernum without the almond sort of a, a kind of citrusy vibe going through the syrup it's just delicious i'll be honest now I've, I've drunk three of them. I can't drink anymore. So, so they're just going into there. My, we might have a little blend going. A blend of my ties going on later. Now, number six, uh, the last semi-normal one before we get a little bit crazier. And I didn't want to leave out spiced rum. I know I talk about these four spiced rums most of the time, but in all honesty, it's these six that kind of prop up and that I go to time and time again. Now I just want to point one thing out if you are using spiced rum, they are naturally sweeter. Okay, these are probably the better brands of spiced rum out there, but don't forget these are naturally sweeter than your some of your other rums that you would use. So for me, if you're if you're on my sort of palette wavelength, you're gonna have to dial down the sweetness from your syrups that you're using, your orgeat and your simple or your brown sugar syrup. But once you nail the ratios these just add something completely unique to a Mai Tai, and I absolutely love them. Again, not for the purists, I get that, but I know there's a lot of spiced rum lovers out there, of course there is. Honestly, I, I guarantee I would convert even a purist. If a Mai Tai purist, I guarantee I'd convert with the rum I'm about to go with. Now, all of those six spiced rums I adore. They're great cocktail rums, they're great mixers, so rum highballs, like rum and coke, rum and ginger, all that sort of stuff, they're great. But there's one I just keep coming back to time and time again for cocktails because it isn't overly that sweet. It is one of my favorite spiced rum and cokes and it is for me probably the pinnacle for spiced rum cocktails. That's not discounting the other five at all, but I promise you when you start swapping this into normal proper rum cocktails, it is just next level. There's something about it that is just absolutely on steroids it is amazing and for those of you that don't know too much about what this is basically pusses is uh, they've changed the recipes like a few times over the years but essentially this is a demerara ddl rums essentially for a plain you know complete disclosure essentially el dorado but different obviously blends as guyana same distillery but this is their gunpowder proof spiced uh, 54 and a half percent spiced rum and it's just something about rum and spiced rum and coke with that amazing but rum cocktails oh Now the last four is where we start to have some fun, the fruitier fun. So we're starting off with a pineapple Mai Tai. Now I'm resisting the urge to use juice in, in these or anything like that. These are proper rums and liqueurs, simple swaps without really affecting the balance of the cocktail. Now by all means, you could play with your rum blend. You could just do 30 mil of Stiggins Fancy pineapple um, rum there. You could do a uh, blended with 60 mil of something else. That is completely up to you. What I'm about to tell you is just 60 mil of that. So that is your rum blend for a pineapple Mai Tai on steroids. Play about, look, I'm here for inspiration, not to tell you what to do. I've done 60 mil of that, but my orange liqueur, my dry orange curacao uh, blend has gone. And instead, so I've kept the orange out, I've kept the brown, I've kept the lime. What I've done instead is the 15 mil of the orange has now gone onto 15 mil of Jufard's Caribbean pineapple. I promise you, I, I'm all about Jufard's premium range. Oh, they are so, so, so good. That 15 mil with that pineapple Mai Tai. Honestly, if you're of that persuasion, I, and I mean, I love my fun fruit stuff as well. It's just mind-blowingly good. Now, for number eight, probably even more obvious than what the pineapple Mai Tai was would be the banana Mai Tai. Now, there's a few ways you could go here. You could automatically just go for either a 60 mil of a banana rum and or just leave that as your rum, or you could do 30 mil and another rum as a rum blend of like a really good banana rum. I know, like in my membership community, I know some people don't really like this, but for me, that is the most authentic banana rum on the market. Yes, there are other, there are other banana rums, some sweeter, some less sweet, but far, as far as actual peeling a banana and tasting it and then drinking it, I mean, that, that that's actually seen real life bananas. So that's why I really do like that. But, you know, you don't have to go there. But what I'm actually, what this actually is, is not that at all. Because I've actually, um, in my head, what I've actually just done for this is actually just a blend of uh, 30 ml of each of Smith & Cross and the Zomaka. 
Uh, so I've just used 30 mil Smith and Cross, 30 mil of Mecca, but then replaced again the orange liqueur with the banana liqueur. So we've gone for kind of like a Jamaican, inherent Jamaican vibe with a banana liqueur. Again, Giffard, look, I know you're gonna buy cheaper. I get that. I know there's other banana liqueurs on the market, but as I always say, and I've never been proved wrong, never been proved wrong, once you go premium Giffard, you will never, ever go back. I've got a 100% success rate in converting people. Once they do spend the extra five pounds or whatever it is, a bottle on that, you know, it's just next level compared with other banana liqueurs. But you could, as I've done on the previous Saturday video, you could go even the extra step and use banana bitters. And number nine, again, this is completely obvious. I promise you, number 10 is on the similar lines, but number 10 is just like, out there for for my Thai lovers but number nine i've said it time and time again apricot for me needs more love in rum world i don't understand why apricot is just not that loved you know it's just absolutely delicious and i think one of the reasons why it's not that well loved is because not many people actually upgrade to the premium g5 you will kind of go to your normal apricot brandies your bottles your decipers and all that sort of stuff as i've just said with the banana dump the extra five pounds six pounds whatever it is on posh Giffard your mind will be blown just how good that is so just to quickly in case you haven't worked it out you get again it's just simply swapping 15 mil of your orange liqueur for your apricot and you've got an apricot Mai Tai but you know I'm fully equipped with apricot I've got the morning there and what you could actually do uh, i personally would keep the orge in there i think the, obviously it needs the almond though so again seven and a half mil maybe up into 10 mil bringing that down slightly to 10 mil uh swapping out your sort of rich your brown your demerara sugar for a morning apricot syrup and you've got a similar kind of thing the number 10 your larry mai tai in the uk i don't know how this translates around the world but in the uk we have a great fascination with the bakewell tart and that can transform into cocktails quite easily the bakewell sour for me on hen pies and things like that everyone just loves it almonds basically in cherry or something in some cases raspberry but cherry now of course we've got the almonds haven't we the almonds already in there the orgeat syrup so what you can effectively do and I've just made it, and it is really, really delicious. Hopefully, that's facing the right way around. Swap your orange liqueur for a decent cherry brandy. Now, I'm not saying this is the best. Uh, this was gifted to me by Master Malt. Thank you very much, Master Malt. It is one of their brands. Um, you've got stuff like uh, Luxardo. The other one would be uh, like Cherry Hearing. You want some, it's, it's Luxardo, San Malaco, something like that. Absolutely delicious. You want something that's thicker and syrupy and more kind of um, cherry unctuous is the word. Like Bowles cherry brandy, the Kuiper cherry brandy, it, it, stay clear of them. They're kind of bleh, sort of things. Just invest, if you're going to go down this route, just invest a little bit more in those kind of thicker, more luxurious uh, kind of um, liqueurs. But as a bakewell, I mean, this is a bakewell Mai Tai. The cherry, the almond in there, everything's the same. Play about with your rum, rum blends. Gonna, gonna finish your video with a Larry cocktail, ain't ya?